Oh, there she is. Now, now this, I'm sorry, but this is terrible. Beautiful. Now, the Geminos T. Here it is. It's a beast, it's heavy. Gross weight, 14.9 kilos. Net weight, 11 kilos. Ah, right, it's a box within a box. Let's see if we're doing this properly. Oh. Okay. So that's the proper box, right there. It seems to have a very detailed user guide here, which I'll probably suggest you do have a good read through. So we have some instructions here on drivers, Windows drivers and Mac drivers. And on the back, how to connect to Geminos. Again, important instructions, have a good read through them. Two accessory boxes here. Let's open this one first, see what we get. So first off, we have a nice silky cloth. Look at that. We have a USB-C to USB-C cable. Here we have the power adapter. You can see there USB-C 1, USB-C 2. That's the connector straight out the box. Mobile Pixels logo on there. Great news, they cater for many different countries. And obviously I'm in the UK, so I'm gonna be using this one. Lots more cables by the looks of it. Uh, what do we have here first? A webcam cover, privacy protection. USB-C to USB-C cable, USB-C, USB-C cable. Now this one, USB-C to USB-A, but you have an adapter to convert that to USB-C which is nice. And these are two HDMI cables. So that pretty much means these cables here are more for connecting your laptop or external device to the screens. This is powering the screens. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Beautiful. How heavy is this? No word of a lie, yeah? No word of a lie. There's some weight to that. The springy base. So this might be important to, to point out. Do not pull or lift from here. So do not pull that, which I didn't do. So you wanna come from the bottom here. Lift handle to open. So you're gonna be lifting this. Okay, let's get it on the desk. I'm gonna lift from here. Okay, wow, right. Okay, scan here, look, you can get an additional six months warranty. There's the built-in webcam, and there's some instructions here, press handle down to lower screen, like that. Obviously, we don't wanna do that. So that's the first section, and then you lift. Okay, okay, right. And look, that is it fully, Extended. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> Look at it. This is absolutely fantastic. Look, you can have it sit like that. So I want to play around with the, and then. Oh. Okay, so that's locked like that. Didn't like the sound of that. So a bit of a bit of a push down, so that's locked. Like that. 90 degree angle. Push down. A bit more. Boom. Fold it away. So when you finished, if you want, you could just fold it away like that. Adding protection to the display. So if anything's flying across the room, if you've got kids throwing things, that's good. No, this is good. This um I'm excited. Okay. Okay. Boom. Perfect, so there's no twisting. So you can't twist it like that, you can't rotate it. This is the movement. Okay, so I think you get the gist and the idea of how that sort of works. Let's have a look at the back, see what connections we've got and plug it in and maybe take all these million different stickers off. So this is where you're gonna be powering. You're gonna be plugging your USB-C power source, that block that I showed you earlier, 
it's going to be powering it. This stick here, bottom input. So the HDMI and the USB-C port there is basically for the bottom display. So if you want to connect your MacBook or whatever, or PlayStation or PC into this side, it's going to display on the bottom screen. And then the same here, top input. So anything you plug into the HDMI or USB-C here will be displayed on the top display. So you can have a couple of different devices connect at the same time on the two different displays. On the left here, we have a 3.5 mm socket for headphones. Now, obviously you can have a device displayed on both screens. Obviously you just need to use maybe an input there for USB-C and an input there for HDMI. Or if you've got two USB-C outputs, you can input two USB-C, which I will probably do from the MacBook that I have. We'll see that. And situated here, which will be behind the monitors when they're up, are the speakers. One speaker there and a speaker there. Now at the bottom here, which is very, very handy, a micro SD card and a normal SD card slot there. Perfect. And on the other side, we have a couple of USB-A ports as well. So plenty of connections there. So these three touch sensitive buttons on the side here are for the bottom display and those three are for the top. Oh God. Okay. We've left a little bit of residue, but I have some trusty alcohol wipes here, which hopefully Oh, well, that's a bit disappointing if it's left a little bit of residue on there. I don't know. Yeah, it's really Yeah, there's a bit of there's quite a bit of glue on there, which I thought might have rubbed off with this alcohol wipe. So I'll have to revisit this. But like, I'm not going to take them other stickers off. Now, now this, I'm sorry, but this is terrible. It's really stuck on there. I think there's a little, yeah, there's a little bit of glue there. This isn't a nice process, I must admit. That one was better. So we have power. And obviously at the minute, there is nothing plugged in. No signal. I'm gonna use the USB-C cables that come with it. Now, thankfully on the MacBook, I have two USB-Cs on this side, um, a spare one on the other side. Obviously your setup might be different, but it can accept two USB-Cs, two HDMIs, or one USB-C and one HDMI. So you can mix it up. Okay. Those two here. This is gonna be the bottom screen. This USB-C cable here will be the top screen. We're gonna open this up. Ta-da! <laughs> Look at that. And obviously I can use the Mac as my third screen. I might pop it over there on the left once I've properly got everything set up. Um, but yeah, that is just incredible. I just love it. It's just, obviously stacked monitors is totally different to what I'm used to totally new um, I absolutely love it next thing you need to download drivers okay you need to download the drivers now this is the Geminos T so it should be touchscreen enabled but I'm going to download all these drivers and uh, see how we get on and then obviously we need to arrange the screens so they're stacked if I go up to the top there, it won't go to the next screen there. I need to go to the left. No, I don't. I need to go to the right for it to appear there. So I'm going to set all that up in the Mac in a moment. Now, Mac OS Touch Driver. Now, I've downloaded that driver as well. 
I'm just going to install this driver as well. You might just have to do the touch driver or you might have to do them both separate. So I'm going to do both of them, cover both bases. Welcome to the installer. This will take 170, 20, 172 megabytes. That's fine. Let's install this. Right, okay, so in order to perform the modules, the UPDD commander requires permission to control your computer using Mac's, Mac OS's accessibility feature. So it looks like you need to turn these on. Obviously that's totally up to you if you want to do it, but I'm absolutely fine with turning both of these on. The installation has completed. Close that, move to bin. Okay. So accessibility, those need to be turned on. Okay, so I'm having a, a little bit of a battle in terms of getting the, the UPDD system extension working. I think Apple's quite you know, secured and locked down. But you have to come in privacy and security and click allow. Put your password in. Okay. Okay, so we do have touch activated at the moment, which is great. Let's click arrange. So obviously we have the built-in display, that's the Mac at the moment. We have this one, that's flashing red there. So we wanna put the, well that one there at the top. That's at the top, that's at the bottom. And let's put the Mac at the bottom as well. So that is now our setup, uh, let's get upwards, done. So now if I, there we go, I can drag straight up to the top, nice one. So this video was purely for the unboxing and the setup of these screens. Now the overall setup in terms of unboxing and getting it connected to the laptop was fairly straightforward. Maybe a little bit more involved with trying to obviously to install the software and get in the touch panel at the touch screen to start working, uh, the bottom one. I mean, obviously if you're comfortable, you do need to allow certain permissions and stuff for the touch screen to actually work. Uh, this is the MacBook anyway, I don't know what it's like in, in Windows, but that's the experience I had with this MacBook Pro. After you've done all that, it's absolutely fine. And this is how I've got it set up at the moment. So I've now moved the MacBook Pro to the left-hand side. Uh, I've also plugged in a wired mouse at the back using the spare USB A ports, which is great. You can use wireless as well, obviously, depending on what device you have. But I like to plug in with a cable at the back there and arranged all the monitors and arranged the screens that way as well. So I dragged to the left for the MacBook Pro. And at the minute it's working absolutely fine. Now I will do another video on actually using the screens. I might give it a couple of weeks or so, something like that. Uh, just like a proper review, but this is just purely unboxing and setup. Now the stickers, which caused me a lot of pain, uh, as you saw in the video, I've managed to get rid of pretty much all of the sticky residue that gets left on, on there, using them alcohol wipes. I just had to go back again and give them a good old buffing over. Thankfully, there doesn't seem to be any trace of that. So initially a pain in the arse, but once that's done, you're fine. So I hope this video for now has been helpful in you know, getting your setup and um, installed. If it has, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll include links to the screens in the description as well if you want to take a look at them. But thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.